Welcome to this presentation for CO275 about titanium modules. So, so far in the course we wrote some titanium code with some simple interfaces, uh, but what if you would like to do some advanced things and yet uh, perhaps you're the single developer at the company and you don't really have time to develop a lot of things from scratch. Well, titanium comes with a marketplace where you can buy code that others developed and simply plug it in to your own application. Right now I'm looking at the web page in the documentation system that explains how to install uh, additional modules. But let's take a look at the marketplace itself. For that I'm going to go ahead and bring, bring up the Accelerator um, homepage and I'm, uh, I think I'm already logged in so I'll just click on Marketplace. From here, I'll say go to marketplace, and now I am in the uh, accelerator marketplace. Well, some code you have to pay for, and some code is free. So uh, you may want to take a look at the free modules first. Uh, otherwise, some of those modules may be worth uh, the money uh, if you um, uh, if you choose to do that. So here are some of the sections. Uh, let's say, uh, let's look at maybe media. Here are some modules uh, that you can use inside of your app that allow you to work with music, with uh, videos. Uh, let's look at gaming. Here's a set of modules that allows you to get started on writing games with Titanium. Perhaps you're looking at some cloud storage and here are the ready-made modules. So, for the needs of this demonstration, we're going to work with one of the free modules, so that way you can do this at home. Uh, the module is called Paint, so uh, you should be able to uh, locate it. Here is the Paint module, and of course it is free. So let's take a closer look at this module. Alright, this module is going to allow us to draw on the screen, uh, to do this both in iPhone and in the uh, Android platform and uh, we'll have some buttons available to us. So let's see how we can implement this module. So first of all we have to download the module. Okay, So uh, you'll go ahead and uh, um, your button here once you log in will say download. Once you download uh, this becomes your uh, module under purchased modules or products. So here it is the paint module. Now, once you are inside of the Paint module, you can click on it, and then you end up downloading a zip file. Okay, the zip file is titled uh, TI Paint, which is the code name for the module, followed by the versions of the iPhone and the version of the Android module. And these versions will be important in just a second. Okay, I downloaded these uh, a moment ago, and so I have those uh, under my downloads. Okay. It's a zip file again. And now I will go ahead and create a new project in Titanium. Uh, so I'll say File, New, Titanium Mob Mobile Project. I'll call this project uh, Paint. And uh, we'll go ahead and create an app ID uh, edu.grcc.co275.paint followed by grcc.edu slash mobile apps. And I'll simply have iPhone and Android here as the platforms and uncheck the additional um, selections. Press next, finish. So, so far we are uh, just building um, a demo application and we could run this application for both iPhone or Android simulators. Notice this modules section. This is going to be important to us in just a second. Okay, so at this point, what we are ready to do is we're ready to drag and drop. We're ready to drag and drop this zip file onto the root of our project. So I'm just going to drag it right on top of uh, paint. Okay, and it says, do you want to copy files? Yes. Uh, okay, so now right on the root of the paint project I have my zip file. If I was to look at the file system 
right the zip file is right here so next to the resources directory I have to have the zip file well at this point uh, if I was to add, try to add a new project notice that this um, uh, I'm sorry if I was to add a new module the new module is not appearing here perhaps in the future uh, studio is going to be more uh, efficient so that it automatically shows um, the contents of the zip file uh, but for now what we have to do uh, we have to actually edit the XML file. Now the easy way to edit this XML file for us is going to be by adding an already existing module that's available like the TI Cloud for example and then manipulating that code. Okay, We'll do it in just a second. Let me go back here to documentation and show you where we are as far as uh, uh, these modules go. And by the way right now if you just follow this documentation it's not going to work uh, for you so I'm going to point out uh, a couple of places where we need to uh, perform an additional step to make the modules work okay so we downloaded the module step one then we are installing the module we open it on ta a titanium we have a new project we open it in project explorer and then we drag the zip file okay so that's where we are at next we are asked to, uh, oh, and by the way, we are performing the per project installation, which basically means uh, we are going to install this module just for this selected project. It is also possible to install a downloaded module so that any new project can use it. Uh, because uh, you, you are probably using Windows while I'm using Mac, it's going to be easier for us to work on the per project installation just so that we, we don't have to worry about uh, about paths on the system okay so at this point um, we want to be able to get to the point where we are adding the module well what we have to do is we're gonna have to use this manual method where we will manipulate the XML file here is how it's done first I'm going to add just a sample new module and I'm doing that so that inside of my XML version, this is an interface that's, that's uh, it's a GUI. Now I'm going to switch to the XML version. Okay. Now I have code here that was generated for me. See, this code uh, I could have typed in earlier, but it's just easier for me to uh, manipulate this um, once it's generated. And I'm going to say something like iPhone um, version... Uh, and I can see that the iPhone version is 1.2 of our code so I'll go ahead and plug that in 1.2 and the name of my module is uh, TI paint okay the reason why we are doing this and you can see that this has changed here is to let the studio know we intend to use the zip file next when I try to execute this project this particular zip file will be exploded, it will be unzipped and uh, the module will actually be installed. Okay, So that's the step that we need to perform. So in our XML file we have now this entry, uh, the GUI makes note of that and now we are ready to go ahead and run it. And I can just run it uh, in, in any uh, simulator. Um, what it should do at this point, it should um, it should go ahead and execute uh, the demo app. Notice in the info section it has detected a third-party module. Okay, If it, you do not have that info line it is possible that you uh, um, spelled iPhone with capital P. Okay, The case here is important and in just a moment you will see how important it is. We have to keep everything lowercase. Okay, so it executed. We expected this particular um, app to come up but notice what happens now at the file system level the zip file is now missing instead we have this modules directory with two subdirectories Android and iPhone and um, we also now have an underscore Mac OS X uh, and, and that's because the zip file actually contains this folder so all, even on your Windows system you probably will end up with this folder you can actually delete it later if I go to paint project, right click on it and say refresh, the zip file will go away. 
because the zip file doesn't actually exist anymore on the file system. Okay, so now we actually installed our project and notice that TI Paint now appears uh, as a valid module. But also notice please that this 1.2 is grayed out. And that is very important because even if I oops, even if I edit this and I go to select the appropriate versions of my module, okay, they will still not appear. And that's a problem. Uh, this problem is related to this uppercase lower lowercase issue. To fix it right away, let's do this. Let's go under Modules and simply right click and then rename to lowercase both Android and iPhone. Okay, we'll renaming this to lowercase. Okay. Now notice that when I select the versions, the versions stick, they are in black, so they're valid. At the file system level, what we did is we went under modules and then renamed the directories. Very, very important step. Once we're here here and we renamed those correctly, what we need to do, uh, and sometimes you need to do this uh, uh, when you see other problems, make sure that under the iPhone, under the build directory, you highlight all the directories, okay? So maybe it's easier to actually go inside of the iPhone directory and delete the build files, okay? Uh, for me, it's actually not uh, that important because I have not built this module yet, but the moment the module is built incorrectly with the uh, wrong case on the directories, uh, it will be sitting in this build directory and it doesn't matter what else you, you do with XML file, okay? So just for, uh, in terms of uh, troubleshooting, you can always come in here and delete these directories so they're empty, so that you have a full new build. Okay. At this point, we have the module. We have it enabled for both Android and, and iPhone. And uh, all we have to do now is we need to change this the default um, program right this right here is not the paint it's, it, this program is not using the paint module so we just have to write now code which allows us to use the paint module well this code is already written for us right this code is written under the actual module uh, name the version under example right so most modules that you download from the marketplace Somewhere in the middle here we'll have an example. So I'll double click on that file and look at this. Right at the top it's uh, requiring the particular module, building it. It's using a single window. Uh, this window, window is built. It's going to, in the background, use um, our default image, that's our splash screen, and then it'll open the window. The code in the middle creates a number of buttons and, uh, of course, that's the beauty of these modules is that you can write the code inside of your app for any uh, use of that module. Okay, let's copy this code and we have to drop it inside of our main apps um, app.js file. So this example file, I'm going to close it now. And what we are doing is we are editing under resources our app.js. Okay, that is the file that, that our application is going to be using. Well, with this in place, we're ready to use our new module. I will say, run this as an iPhone simulator first. Notice that it has detected a third-party module, and it's also doing the full rebuild. Okay, that is very important. And uh, in a moment here, we should see the, the simulator start up. All right, so here it is, and there is our module. I can use the red paint, I can use the green paint, and I can uh, do other tricks with the buttons available. I can finally say clear, and I can draw again. 
All right, so that's what it looks like on the iPhone. And if I was to run it now on the uh, Android, let me just verify that we have uh, the paint as the project. By the way, when you uh, execute uh, the Android simulator, you might have to come in here. Let me show you again how to how to get here. You go under Play, Run Configurations, and then you might have to select the correct project. And um, well, that's not the one I I meant to edit. Let's see. Uh, let's go here to Run Configurations, and under Android Phone. We have the paint, we have Android 233, and everything else looks fine, and we can run right from here. Okay, so this is building now the Android version. Okay, while this is uh, building, this is going to take uh, just a moment. I would like to uh, go back to the documentation and just bring out the fact that the documentation does not mention the case sensitive nature of, of this entry, that this entry needs to match what's on the file system, right? That's why we went to rename the directories. Uh, without this documentation, if you just download what's in the marketplace, you might struggle with it um, not installing uh, correctly. Okay, great. So at this point, I'm going to unlock the screen. Sometimes it looks like the simulator isn't doing anything, but there's a hamster running behind the scenes, and so I just have to be patient. Okay, and so this is what this app looks like on the uh, Android simulator. Again, we can choose the color, and we can uh, clear the screen, and um, the module is working. All right, so in this particular uh, recording, I showed you how to enable uh, a, a module downloaded from the marketplace, Accelerate Marketplace, where you find free modules uh, and also paid modules, which really is a great way for developers to make money uh, on uh, some simple code or, or code that they have uh, developed. Um, basically, the modules are compiled, so um, you, know, you can uh, distribute them uh, commercially, and uh, then uh, other developers just write code to use the module. You actually can't see the code that was uh, used to write the module. Well, thank you very much, and I hope that you have fun with those custom modules.